everyone who's joining the conversation late is going, all right, dude, you think you're a clone and you want to go build the pyramids in the middle of the desert that are micro cities, but actually you want to have Bill Gates do it and then you want to take all the credit for it. And, uh, but actually you're actually going to have a bunch of engineers do it that are not from Harvard. They're going to be from MIT, but for some reason I'm going to have an economist from Harvard, but he's not from Harvard. He's from Columbia, but he's maybe not from Columbia. He's from Bernard college, but, um, and you know what? I, I'm not going to hire anybody from Harvard other than Perry Merling anyways. So, and everyone's saying, I don't, I don't think that it would be okay to, let you have a dictatorship over Nevada with, but the real dictator would be Bill Gates. And we all know that because I, I, I would be, in, be fearful of Bill Gates because I mean, he didn't even own a yacht until recently. So anyways, well, that's the inside of the Luxor hotel and you see how it doesn't have any columns at all inside. It's because of the shape of the pyramid. And so we build the inside like that, but we can build it bigger because we can actually have columns inside. Because if if the 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 the, the sh what is it? It's like an equilateral triangle. I don't know what it is. It's a. I don't know. Um, it's a pyramid shape that is built to that is perfect for building super tall, and that's why the tallest um, buildings in the world for a long time were the pyramids in Giza, and so we can build it as tall as we want and because it's shaped like that the reflectors will be closer to the water tower and so we can minimize distance but the problem is you can only do it for certain times of the day but i think that if we can make it super duper hot because the, like what shape would be would make it the hottest possible if we're trying to make um mirrors like what what, what like what like, would it be having the mirrors flat on the ground and being able to hit it the most, like, throughout the entire day? Or would it be hitting it during certain hours with um, a minimized distance? I would think that it would be this way. But you know what? I might be wrong. And if I'm wrong, then I would say we shouldn't do it. But if I'm, if I'm possibly right, then I think we should try it. And that's why we would need a special economic zone eventually. Because I don't have to be a dicta the di dictator of Nevada all, like um, always, but um, if it works, I'm going to need to be dictator of Nevada because I'm going to need to be able to claim like, public land like so easily because um, we're going to basically fill the, fill the entire area with pyramids, but not the Strip. Um, but from the Strip, you're going to have a really cool view of pyramids if we build a ton of them. But I understand this is um, bad for the environment because it would involve a lot of carbon emissions because of steel, but I think steel is being used everywhere in the world right now, and if we just didn't use it anywhere else, and we used it in a way that's going to be like a very long-term solution because if you think about it, um, we're generating electricity on site, we're also generating steam, we can cook with the steam, um, we're consolidating the overhead of um, of the HVAC, you know, of, of moving the air, of air conditioning. We um, are, are I, I mean, I think it would probably be the most sustainable style of living anyways, because uh, also because you're near the farmland in, in, in California. So um, that's like the whole, I mean, it's, it's thinking about where we're going to have people live, but in order to do that, we have to be able to fill up Lake Mead because we're going to increase the water requirements for that area. And so, um, yeah, I feel like everyone wants a, a president who's not crazy, but, um, and, and I understand that, but you might need someone that's crazy enough to solve the energy crisis in charge because we might need someone that's so radical that I'd be down to go to war with certain people. But like I've said, I'm going to do whatever Congress says for my first four years and the Joint Chiefs of Staff can hold me to that. And no matter what, the Joint Chiefs of Staff like can hold me to anything. Like Congress could 
um, declare it, and then the Joint Chiefs of Staff could say no, and then we'd have to fire them and put different people in charge in the military. But, um, I mean, but that's like, because Cong like that would take like all of Congress to put them in that sort of position. But like, regardless, you have to have the Joint Chiefs of Staff on board. So, um, like, even if I didn't have Congress, I would, I would have to have them because like, you don't fight a war without your military. The military fights the war. And I know that everyone thinks that it's the button, but so I, 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 I know, I, I'm explaining it because I realized that like, they're like, dude, during imaginary world war three, you did not care if people died and I want you to care if I die. And what I would tell you is, um, sometimes people caring too much if people die results in you dying because they're afraid of using nukes. And so the best thing about having me as commander in chief is I don't give a shit how many people die, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kill the other side first. And so, um, I, and I'm not going to kill my side. And so, um, my willingness to kill if, if necessary means that you actually might be more safe. So I understand that you're like, dude, this guy's crazy. He's going to get me killed. If I elect him, what you also have to understand is I'm crazy. I will kill them enough to keep you safe. Because sometimes if you don't kill enough in, in, in like if you're in a situation where you should kill enough and you don't kill enough, then those people you don't kill, like it's like in the story, the bad guy comes back at the end. You, 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 you let me go three times throughout the rest of the movie. And now I'm going to actually finally kill you. And then the bad guy accidentally kills himself. And then the good guy's like, oh no, you accidentally killed yourself. You fell off the building. And then everyone's like, oh gosh, well, at least the good guy didn't have to kill someone. You know I mean? Like uh, that, well, I, I don't, I don't really want that to be the scenario. So, um, I'd rather just like kill him. And, um, but, um, I'm, I'm also aware that, Killing in certain circumstances, like the Suleimani thing, could have been big enough that, like, you got to make a decision. You know, did we start World War Three if Suleimani started World War Three? Yeah. So we had to end up like, like, what is this like? <laughs> like, is this is this the Revolutionary War? Are we like redcoats walking up to each other? Oh, I will uh, duel you now. Uh, pff, oh, missed <laughs> because I, I'm shooting a musket. You never know where it's gonna go. And then the, and the other person shoots back at you. Oh. Pff, oh. Oh, you got me in me leg. I can still shoot back at you. <laughs> but it's a gentleman's duel. We have to figure out who's going to win, who's not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really into uh, fighting like that. So um, I think we should kill people if we're in that situation. So, I, I mean, the fact that like that is never going to be the way that I do foreign policy. Um, but because, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Iran uh, stopped. But... Um, yeah, so if you put me in charge, you might actually be safer because I'm not afraid of killing. 